Hi everybody, based on our discussion today in class, I'm going to focus tonight's video on movement of curves in these graphs, what causes the movement, and what happens as a result of the movement. We'll also talk about uh, elasticities that impact the changes in supply and demand when taxes are imposed. So let's start off by a review of some of the things that we talked about today. And really, I ought to be starting with this slide. Okay, consumer surplus and producer surplus. As a review, consumer per surplus equals the area above the equilibrium price and below the demand curve. Producer surplus equals the area below the price and above the supply curve. Total surplus equals consumer surplus plus producer surplus. Here's the stuff again I mentioned today. You just need to memorize it. This is really, really good fodder for a multiple choice test. Pause the video if you need to to make sure you understand all these and then ask me questions or email me if they aren't clear to you. Let's move on to what happens when an excise tax is imposed in the marketplace. And in this case, an excise tax is paid by the supplier. So in this example, we have a $40 per room excise tax imposed on hotel rooms. So here's what happens. Step one, the $40 excise ta tax moves the supply curve, so shifts the supply curve up by an amount equal to the size of the tax. So a good way to look at the change in a curve and make sure you're measuring the right distance is to go over to the price axis, take E for example, and draw a straight line. That straight line at E, if you go up roughly to so forty dollars eighty to twenty one twenty. Draw a straight line over from one twenty. See where your point of intersection happens, and that's how far you need to move up the pri the supply curve. That for me is just a quick way to make that happen. So as a result, what do our curves look like? Well, get to uh, get these out of the way. Okay, now that these are out of the way, what has happened? Well. As a result of the excise tax being levied and this wedge being inserted, the supply curve shifts up $40. The new quantity demanded is reduced from $10,000 to $5,000, and that's simply looking at the change in equilibrium. And now we've moved from E to A. The new price at equilibrium here is $100. And again, A minus B since it's the same distance here, these are parallel lines, this is the size of the wedge, and that equals the $40 excise tax. Now, we talk here about missed opportunities. The missed opportunities represent all those people who are going to buy hotel rooms and all the people who are going to sell hotel rooms and all the opportunities to do that that are now gone because the price has gone up and the supply, this, the, 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 the quantity supplied, has gone down as well. Look at what happens when the excise tax is imposed on the consumer rather than on the supplier. Well, similar in a similar fashion and distance as the change in the supply curve with the supplier, this time because it's the consumer, we're talking about a shift, a downward shift in demand that represents the, the imposition of the $40 tax per room. Well, let's see how this impacts our equilibrium. Equilibrium was out here. $10,000 and $80 for the room with a decrease in demand because of the increase in price, increase in price happening because of the excise tax. Well, we see movement down the supply curve down to a point where the equilibrium quantity is now $5,000. Keep in mind though, like a quota imposition, we don't simply look at the equilibrium price and say, oh, it must be $60. In the absence of an excise tax, the equilibrium point would simply be 5,000 units and $60. But remember, we have to charge for that excise tax as well. So what happens is the price charged is the equilibrium price plus the distance or the amount represented by the excess tax, in this case $40, so the new price charged is $100. Even though this is probably a little small for you to see, I've left in here, just repeated the point that the imposition of the tax had the same net effect on 
the marketplace, whether the supplier was taxed or the producer was taxed. You can see that the distances there were removed. Again, you can pause the video if you have, if you want to take a closer look at that. All right, what we didn't get to in class today that we need to cover is price elasticity of demand and supply and how that impacts tax incidents. The reality is that sort of in the real world, tax incidents doesn't impact consumers and producers equally. Actually, it depends on price elasticity of supply and elasticity of demand. Let's take a look here at a market for gasoline. So as consumers, we have low price elasticity of demand for gasoline. We have to have it, and it doesn't really matter what the price is. On the flip side, for suppliers, they can jump in and, the, in and out of the market relatively quickly. So when there's even a small change in price, they can significantly reduce or significantly increase the amount of gas that they're producing. In the case of this example, there is an excise tax of $1 per gallon imposed in the marketplace. And the question is asking us what happens. Well, if we start here at equilibrium, we know we're going to have movement to the left because that's the nature of supply and demand. As price goes up, there will be movement along the demand curve to represent an increase in price. Well, how much is the question that's being asked? Here's what I do as a little trick, and I hope it's helpful. What I do is I look at the amount of the excise tax, which in this case is a dollar, and I simply draw a line. I then take that line, I start at the point where the equilibrium was, and I start moving over. And I say, well, what's the point at which I can fit that wedge between my supply and demand curves? And it just so happens that point happens to be about right here. So that means that when that dollar excise tax was imposed, my price went up, and here the answer is given to us, and we'll talk about computing it later, but that price went up dramatically, the price that I as a consumer pay for it, but not by the full amount of the excise tax. Why is that? Or rather, there's a great amount of elasticity in the supply curve, so there is a tilt to it. And it went down a little bit as my quantity demanded changed. So I didn't bear, the consumer didn't bear the entire amount of that change. But again, for me, drawing that wedge in there, moving it over is an easy way to figure out the magnitude of change on both the supply and demand side. The cost of taxation. On the benefit side, what do we have? We have revenue generated for the government equal to the wedge height times the quantity sold under the tax. Remember, the wedge simply represents the tax and all of that revenue is going to the government. So in this case, you have a wedge that is 5,000 units by 40 units. So what is that, 200,000 units? Uh, sorry, 20,000 20, units or $20,000, we'd say here. That's a simple computation of the area of tax revenue. So that's the benefit. Well, let's talk about the costs, and the costs are a little, hard to, a little harder to uh, figure out. First of all, remember that in the absence of this tax, Total consumer surplus is represented by this triangle, and total producer surplus is represented by this triangle. So what would have been the red plus this white? Total surplus, both consumer and producer, would have been this big triangle. What happens when there is a tax imposed? Well, we know that there's a decrease in the quantity demanded. We've seen it in all of our examples. And this decrease in quantity demanded effectively breaks up our good old triangle of total surplus into six pieces. The first is the remaining existing surplus. So consumer, there are still consumers who were willing to pay more than they had to pay. And that's represented by all of the consumers in this area. There are still producers who ended up getting a price higher than they thought they were going to get, which is represented by this area. Now, what happens with the rest? Well, consumer surplus falls because the price increased. Here was equilibrium price, and here is the price to consumers under this new tax. Well, my surplus goes away because that money that was staying with me now goes to the government instead. And here, area B, represents the number of consumers who were participating in the market out here at QE and have since gone away, said, I'm not going to buy the product. Similarly, 
area C represents what used to be producer surplus, so the difference between what I would have sold for and what I was able to get, well, and now what I actually get, right? This is the effective price that I collect because I have to pay out the rest in an excise tax. So I lose all this surplus. Surplus again being the difference between what I would have, what I would have accepted and what is actually being charged. Now here we also have producers leaving the market because they would have produced or supplied here. And as this quantity supplied goes down, well, we have fewer suppliers in the marketplace, fewer units being supplied. And this area, this triangle, both the loss in consumer surplus and the loss in producer surplus is represented as deadweight loss. All right, I hope this is helpful. We'll go through some more exercises and examples tomorrow. Have a great evening.